Hello and welcome to episode 32 of the Take a Poll podcast where we are covering Punchestown and Thurless midweek. Declan Carroll, how are you? Oh, good, good. What about very yourself? Good. Ah, no complaints from me. Uh, very quiet weekend actually, which is uh, which is kind of set me up. It's, it's a busy week uh, elsewhere, but yeah, I'm, I'm ready to roll. Um, two cards to, to look forward to now, but yeah. Um, yeah, we need to try and get back some winners. That, that's well, the that's it. It's been um, it's been a little bit barren, a um, little bit by our yeah, standards. So I didn't really get to have a look at the card I punched down on Sunday. I was, it was in in Ascot, so mm. uh, or in London. I was in Ascot on Saturday, uh, but I I hope I'm hoping to get the punches down tomorrow. Mm. If we can get enough done in the morning, I'll I'll get down there in the afternoon. Good. Very good, very good. What were your thoughts on Ascot? Oh my God. Um, <laughs> What a place, you know, it, mm-hmm. it's something else. It, it blew me brain. So I said to you, it, it's like a cruise ship inside. Obviously, yeah, you've been there massive one. But um, it, it really is something else. Like, you know, I've never seen a race course with escalators before. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the shell doesn't have an escalator now. The Beckham doesn't even have an upstairs, never mind escalators. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Um, no, yeah, it's some it's some race course, all right. I, I think you need to get a good ticket, or else you can't see a whole lot. Though I, I would have thought that was the only kind of knock I have yeah. on the course. But... Well, a, a lot could be said for it. That could be said for a lot of race courses. But obviously, mm-hmm. we had um, oh, I don't know where R- Royal Edward the sixth or something ticket. So we were <laughs> they were very very good seats. He was a they good were... one, was he? You what? He was a good one, was he? <laughs> he obviously he got a, an enclosure named after him. One of the better ones. One of the better ones, yeah. So, um, we were up up quite high, uh, top floor. They were really, really good seats. So, mm-hmm. uh, now enjoyed the day. It was great to see. Um, just George was running away. All those horses were much lower than they are here. <laughs> Did he back any winners? I'm sure it's illegal for him to gamble over there. He, he, he tried to get on a bet. He wouldn't be able to. And he got a couple on. He, he was ringing them in at home. He ringed them in. I saw him on the telly. Someone to tell you with the video, yeah, it's very good. Um, all right, well, we'll move on then to our two cards. Uh, the Quebega Hurdle takes center stage of Punches Town, which features Gala Marceau. Um, she has to give weight around, but or give weight away all around, but um, she should probably be capable to doing it, but more on that later. And then the feature at Thurless, um, is the Michael Purcell. It's a novice hurdle over two and a half miles, which um, sees a nice, uh, nice field go, go to post there. And um, Stafford, you're not probably the the eye catcher um in the in the declarations there but again we will cross that bridge when we come to it we will start with the 145 the best odds guaranteed at bet victor maiden hurdle do you, do you have a bet victor again deck now i don't have a bet victor no. account no best odds guaranteed doesn't sway you know no <laughs> anyway have a bet victor account in ireland I, well, I don't know you hope so if they're sponsoring punches yeah. down or else they're wasting their time i, um, I often wonder that I, I don't i don't know anyone who has a bet victor account <laughs> so, it's a good fun. point it's a good point um all right well we got the full field here including some reserves um farney soldier at the time of recording is already a reserve or is already a non-runner so marat or maroto uh, for willie mullins and paul townend um he was the first reserve but he does get the run and that's going to stop real fours all over the shop as well because he is a short of seven to two yeah. um which is good to see not the strongest of maiden hurdles but they do get weaker at this time of year as we come into the springtime the better ones be held back for next year at this stage um and it's kind of like the you know the late matures or the the ones that don't have futures over future over hurdles that really are going to be winning your races at this time of year You're, for example maybe nick rocket or something like that but um deck we talked about a couple of these last week like milo lysis who, who i thought might need better ground and maybe they're getting them getting them ready on on tougher ground and it looks like it's going to be a similar story here but you could probably throw a blanket over a lot of these. This does look competitive, um, albeit maybe not strong. But uh, what are your thoughts here? Um, yeah, it, it doesn't look the strongest of races. Obviously, you're drawn to Lightkeeper, who's second to Tully Hill, mm. beating seven lengths. Um, but I'm not sure that Tully Hill, although he was he won at Nace, whether that was the same Tully Hill we seen on Sunday at, at Punchestown. Yeah. Um, when he was really, really impressive. Uh, he was also... Light keepers beaten twenty two lengths by Mercury, and I'm not sure Mercury is all that. So, um, I, I'm gonna take him on. Faulty has been off for um 
a year now. He was five lengths behind Fern Fuddy a year ago, and then he was in contention when he stood up ten days after that, and he's been off since. I don't know whether he got hurt when he didn't. Uh, maybe something happened, but he's been off since then. I mean, the one I go with is uh, Military Alliance. Five-year-old had one run on the flat when second at Leopardstown, beating half a length, got a rating of seventy-seven. If Military Military Alliance can jump, I think he could be. You know, he'll be better than. Well, it's hard to know how good he, he could have been on the flat. Like he, he was, uh, he'd only the one run. He was beating half length in a Leperstown Maiden, although it was in October. But you know yourself, Leperstown Maidens can be quite strong. Um, mm. But if he can jump, he could be a much better hurdler than he was going to be a flat horse. And they, they wasted no time, have they? They've gone, no. you know, one, one run and he's hurling now. So. Uh, it'd be military alliance for me. I, I, it, I'm taking the gamble. He can jump. Yeah, well, look, he's by Churchill, and a lot of them, I, I've said it plenty of times, it, they seem to enjoy a hurdle. Um, you know, your your comfort zones, your script writers, um, etc. So, look, it's it's well worth exploring. And he he was um, he did run well at Leopard Sound, of course. Uh, he was an older horse running that day, but. And he's clearly had his problems. Uh, like he is a five-year-old having the second mm. start of his life. He's bred for the flat. But again, he hasn't been missed in the market. He's been installed as a four-to-one shot. Uh, Barry Fitzgerald is a very capable handler as well. Um, yeah, wouldn't put you off him in the slightest. Uh, two horses that I am very much looking at for, um, to see what handicap marks they get. Um, one is Glen River for Dermot McLaughlin. He's a 40-to-one shot here. Um, I'm not sure if they tried to get a handicap mark because he has had three runs. Um, they probably couldn't have picked out three hotter maidens if they tried. He's been beaten by Slade Steel, Codwell Potter, and Mirazor West. Uh, maybe the Mirazor West one was a little bit weak, uh, but he did improve to be fourth that day, despite getting beaten half the track by Mirazor West. But he will find um, he will find his company in, in uh, very very soon, possibly after this race. And he's a horse I think could win races in the near future. As is uh, Colin Murphy's Pax, who was quite an eye catcher behind Jade De Gruzzi the last day um, at Leopardstown. I'm, I'm very interested to see what type of mark he could get. Um, he he actually strikes me as a horse that could actually win a maiden uh, as we get further into the season and later on into the season, um, and maybe a bit of better ground and a bit more experience. Uh, it won't be it won't be on a Wednesday, but I'd be just very interested to see what sort of mark he gets and. It is probably worth noting that Colin Murphy has had a tough, tough year this year. Uh, all the horses completely out of form. So um, when he starts yeah, firing them in again, he, yeah, when he when he starts firing them in again, he could have um, he could have a lot of well handicapped horses on his hands. Um, Light keeper, as you said, deck five to four shot. Um, look, I think Tully Hill got the freedom at Punches Town um, on Sunday. Uh, to win that race, he, he won it easily, but he wasn't necessarily taken on. That's not to say he wasn't impressive. Um, but as you kind of alluded to, that second place behind him might read a little bit better than it actually was um, in the context of this race. Um, Marotto, who, who was the first reserve, we said there, uh, well behind O'Moore Park and only a 72 shot. So that does kind of show you the strength and depth of this race. Uh, Faulty hasn't been seen in basically a year since he slipped up when in contention for a maiden hurdle. Um, so he's kind of, uh, you'd have to be taking a flyer on him and he's as short as nine to four. So a process of elimination deck, if Military Alliance can jump, he'd be the one I'd be the most interested in as well. But look, do I want to be back in a horse of four to one on hurdling debut? That's probably had his problems. Uh, no, but as I said, there's a couple of horses that I mentioned uh, in the shape of Pax and Glen River that I will be putting into the top tracker on our behalf. And I'm going to keep them very, very close, uh, keep a keep very close eye on them. Um, well, if Glen yeah. River was to, to win, it could be the to start to, to a very good day for Damon McLaughlin. But Absolutely, more, yeah. on, more on that later. Yeah, I, I, I thought you might have been going down that road. Um, moving on to the INH Stallion Owners, EBF Maiden Hurdle. A short price favourite here, Deck, Dr. Eggman. Um, had a bit of a reputation in bumpers, like he, he was behind Walkaway Harry um, and Akara Dubois before winning at Ballon Road, beat an intense approach. Uh, that form for a Ballon Robe Maiden wasn't that bad. Uh, Phantom of the Points, very nice. Um, I, I think that's the. I know I've got, I've got him mixed up. Thought that was the Margaret Mullins horse, uh, but still, it, like still strong enough form. Eight to fifteen deck though is, is he a bit? Is he a bit on the skimpy side with with practice run and 
possibly even majestic force in the in the background yeah i'd be keen to take him on just on what we've seen you know look, mm. again, look, a little bit like a professional loser um majestic force was a very easy point to point winner but it's difficult to know where that form is um but practice run big spark in the park who who has won on their rule so i'd probably be, be siding with practice run um don Chalant, he's been off since april 22 he was far mm-hmm. in a very good bumper that punches down behind charles Bourne's horse i think green glory yeah yeah um but look it's been half a long time definitely want to keep an eye on um could you know might travel into the race and just blow up uh which we, we should definitely come on for that uh, if he's retaining the ability show that day but yeah i take dr eggman on with, with practice run practice run very good yeah it's first start for pat foley as well for don chalon too he went off favor for that race he was with willie mullins he's clearly had his issues and hopefully they can just have a bit of a run at him now um majestic force also as you said quite interesting uh, easy winner um of a point to point as she was and look she it, she is a six-year-old now so probably wasn't the strongest point to point in the world but all she can do is go and win uh dr eggman at eight to 15 it is a bit skimpy for me um i'll be just having a quick watch over this race as you said practice run um as you beat in sport in the park it's decent looking form you can never obviously take point to point form as gospel uh, you know that as much as i do but look he's 15 to 2 so you, you could easily take a chance on there for sure uh, moving on then, deck to the Quivega Mares Hurdle, a grade trade feature on the card. Um, nine to four on Gallimer so, um, despite having to give quite a considerable amount of weight all around to Hispanic Moon, Celebi, and Analeka, um, who was a mare I know you quite liked as well, deck. Look, four to nine, you're, you're obviously not going to be a player. Uh, she's actually even wrong at the weights with Hispanic Moon, yes, but you still she think is, she'd yeah. go and win this, or? Well, she, she's wrong at the way to a Hispanic Moon and say V. Now, like Hispanic Moon, she, she won at a big price in her Irish debut. I think she won over fences in France as well. She beat say V that day, but then um, she was six at Leperstown behind say V. And uh, I don't know. Like, I, I feel like Gallup Marceau, even though there's only four pounds in the difference in the ratings, she might just be better than them. And like, she's she, she was a decent juvenile and then she went to france and won during the summer mm. and she was toward in her reappearance at doncaster you'd be hoping she'd come on for that yeah you know i even though she's wrong at the weight i do feel like she's just probably probably going to be more consistent than hispanic moon and, and say la vie and that could be the winning of the race tomorrow and Aleke, mm. I, I think is really really nice but um she was well beat the last day. She was second last home. Um, who was last? Oh, I was Ashdale. Ashdale Flyer. Fury, was it? Ashdale Flyer. Ashdale, Ashdale Flyer, Flyer. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, the two of them, the two of them crossed the line together. It was only short head in it. I think things that punches down in a maiden, but uh, they were well held the last day at Navan. Mm. Look, I, I, I'm not going to take her on. It's not going to be a betting race for me. I know there's, I know she's to give. What is it? Seven pound. Oh, it's um, more than that. It's uh, she's nine, carrying nine. eleven seven versus ten twelve. So she's given nine pounds nine. to Hispanic Moon and Celavi, and she's giving twelve. Is it eleven? Eleven pounds? I think Analeka. Uh, ten nine versus eleven seven. So yeah, mm. Jamie Mac. It's not. It's it's no. It's no easy task really at the weights. But what what you're kind of saying, Deck, probably is that she'd probably be a well handicap one for one if you chucked her into a handicap yeah exactly exactly mm. like she was a decent juvenile she, she'll come on for that reappearance at Doncaster the fact she went mm. over there for her reappearance probably tells you she's been to France as well she's tough yeah. um and she's probably going to be tough enough to, to be this like you know I, I know Hispanic Moon is was a five pound well in but and say la vie, but I, I just maybe she, she probably hasn't been given the opportunity to post our real rating yeah no probably not that's a fair enough point what look my theory with her um it's not really a theory it's, it's actually fact um on our comeback run at doncaster um we talk a lot about five-year-olds and how difficult it can be for them when they're not novices and that is inclusive of mares as well 
She carried 11 stone 8. She had to carry her grade 1 penalty against Astro Diamond, who, for whatever reason, she won a Mare's Novice Hurdle at Fairy House and only had to carry 11 5. Gallimar had to carry 11 8. Um, under control, carrying 11 4. So she's beaten four and a half lengths that day on her comeback. On the same day, Lossy Mouth won the international hurdle really, really impressively at Cheltenham. But she was getting weight off everything. So she was a five year old getting all the allowances despite winning the triumph hurdle, um, despite winning a punches down. Gallimer so the complete opposite, giving weight all around. Lossy Mouth goes to the mayor's hurdle and she'd be off the same weight as everything as a five year old. And she's stepping up to two and a half miles, even though she just looks like a, a complete pure speed demon. Gala Marceau will have been given weight all around. She might not look impressive here. I do think she's going to win, but I think she's going to have to grind it out if she's going to win. So she'll be then finally meeting mares on the correct terms, i.e. getting the same at the, at the same weight as the rest of them. I think Gala Marceau is far more closer to lossy mouth than people think especially over two and a half miles especially when they're off the same weights on the basis of what she did at o otoy last year and i i'd be have no i'd have no problem backing gallop so for the mayor's hurdle even if she was b here so that's how much i i think five-year-olds give them weight away when they're not novices it's a huge disadvantage and it takes a very good horse to be able to do it and um, all you have to do is look at the amount of five-year-olds have won an open company like what's a Espar Dalen? Um I suppose you can stick Lossy Mouth on that list. It's not a very big list um when it comes to the top races. So um yeah, I do think Gala is going to win, but the fact that she's been campaigned giving weight away everywhere she's gone this season, in comparison to Lossy Mouth getting weight off everything, I wouldn't imagine there's very much between them, um, especially at a two and a half mile distance. And I'd be very interested to see how both of them um you know how how the market reacts about them as we get closer to the Cheltenham Festival, but yeah, it would be Gollum herself for me myself as well. Um, three fifteen deck. The see you at the festival twenty twenty four mayor's maiden hurdle. Um, this is pretty much a match between Kuta Dea and um, Tares, who had her form boosted on Sunday when uh, she was second of punches down to third place horse that day. Pagan won the maiden yeah. hurdle, albeit a weak maiden hurdle. Um, I would imagine you might be favouring her over the over Willie's mare here, Dak. Would you, or or do you think Willie's? What way do you say? Well, I it, it's funny because I I was kind of siding with Kuta Diaz the, the last day. Well, I, you know, yeah. was kind of making excuses for her at the same time. Like she's been off since last April. She was toured to June to Marvel that mm. day. Um, she's one I, I'm looking forward to seeing. If, you know, it might not be be this year. Uh, but I, look, it's hard to ignore the form of Therese. She was three lengths second to Bioluminescence last month. She was 11 lengths ahead of Pagan, as you said, and Pagan has won since. Um, Therese has won a point to point, and the horse that was behind her has, has won under rules as well. So there's a lot to like about the form. I know you said it was a weak maiden, but sometimes, like, I just like when there's. You just like saying it's back up. Mm. Yeah, you know, when they're, when they're coming out and they can win at any level, really, like, you know, if there's winners in there, horse and out to win, it, it's usually, like, I, I like to follow that form. So, yeah, I, I'll take on Coup today as, oh, you didn't actually say any prices. What price is Therese? Uh, we've got Therese at six to four. Also, as it probably add, getting eight pounds from the from Willie's mare here as well. Eight to 11, Coup today as. But why is she getting... Oh, yeah, it must be the conditions of the race, but yeah, eight pound swing, which yeah. it's it's very, it's very tempting. Um, yeah. It looks like mares that have not oh, so it's mares that have not won any race under rules get an eight pound allowance. So Coup today has won a bumper, Great and she's the only place. winner. Yeah, it's a nice bit of place, and it's tough on the, on Willie's mare, but this race is designed for horses that have not won yet. So. Um, I'd say that the the schedule is probably dictated where Willie goes with Q today, uh, and yeah. obviously uh, Henry de Bromhead and connections benefit from getting eight pounds off. Or like I think you can make a strong case for for the second favour here. Yeah, yeah, no, I'd be keen enough now on Therese. Yeah, no, I would as well. Um, six to four looks pretty fair, and I, I think I mentioned on the last top as well. Q today, uh, um, they haven't sent her hurdling. 
uh they they persisted in bumpers i know she uh she eventually won a point to point um but i'd have my reservations about seeing her jumping but we shall see but for me it is therese i think she has a fantastic chance and um, so deck this is the could this be the race you're talking about Dermot mclaughlin in the book your group deal today handicap hurdle 350 no. three miles so it's not uh bricelli's voice okay um but anyway take it away i look with bricelli's voice um definitely been getting the hang, hang of things like ran well behind well handicapped horse as well still left the horse still left on its opening mark 107 after a few goals but i'm not sure the step up and trip is what this horse wants and i just mm. be worried about getting home on, on heavy ground and that's the only thing that's torn me off the Chelly's voice because he said the horse has definitely been been getting the hang of things and um, see astride uh the Elia horse handicap debut was poor enough and didn't really jump well um been dropped two pound as well but the jumping is is really what's put me off there you, you do like to see them jump well um normally i'd be keen on one second time in a handicap it this probably not like me and uh, it's kind of surprised a few but sure why not the 12 year old in in great form okay. um just bumped into one the last day um of 103 still off 103 uh duffy's getaway was behind off three pound lower than today so look sure why not should have the beating of duffy's getaway who ran well since was probably went for home too early was second to jericho de bon finished ahead of uh the paul nolan horse give me the honor i think yeah look mm. i i said it to you recently i don't know whether it was on this but sometimes when these veterans are in good form you know that's keep going, to yeah. get them. you know it might be their last time and sure why not has showed a good bit of form solid form last year as well it's just a really really likeable horse i think sure why not could, could look really consistent type i think there there might not be bumping into one tomorrow yeah well they most certainly did bump into mighty oak lad who got a, a manuscript wrote mm. after him in the in the post race comments yeah, uh, he, he, yeah potentially breaching rule 213 and uh 212 b so i think rule 213 is a failure to uh declare that your horse you know usually you see little comments saying like jockey said horse jumped left throughout or hung left throughout or geldy didn't handle the ground um they didn't basically say that the horse didn't handle the ground on its previous starts and then 212 b uh the classic non dryer um so that's been referred to it to a committee i think that's still ongoing uh so yeah uh, sure why not completely we, we put one. my yoke lad up i'm sure <laughs> we, we knew that was happening um, <laughs> um yeah no i i actually was very much drawn to percelli's voice but i kind of it's not that i don't think the three miles will suit him i think he just needs good ground and he's not going to get that um he's not going to get that on wednesday i think he, even tortoise is going to be soft yeah. this week yeah it absolutely is um i'm probably on the fence for this race deck i didn't really uh, have anything that i was really giddy on ferrum down the bottom only rated 80. um that ran a nice race um last time out with fairy house but then again i don't think this is a horse that's probably going to improve for stepping up and trip i think they're stepping up and trip as a kind of a hail mary especially when they're rated 80. like i know yeah. i know you love these low graded ones but jesus christ <laughs> like it can get like there's 80 and then there's you know um like it is well, tough the, the thing about at this level a lot of them the, the, the two mile division can be really really poor because a lot of them step their horses up because they think they need to step up when mm. in truth is they're just not good enough you know i i know we're always looking for the one stepping up but a lot of them just aren't good enough and they're the ones i suppose that we just we don't even look at like you know it's yeah yeah you know um they've been at this level and there's no improvement there unfortunately yeah. it's just, just just not nothing's gone to improve them yeah cosmo renfro is probably the one that's holding its form well uh 94 the handicapper might have him um but he will run his race uh so if there was a gun to my head that's one i would probably look at but as i said uh dex put up the the one that's bumped into uh, a real 212b breacher last time out so you have to take no uh 425 the next race deck 
And this is the Sherry Fitzgerald Brady O'Flaherty supporting Longford GAA handicap hurdle. And this is an 80 to 95. So we're still in your ballpark here, Deck. Um, do you want to take it away? Yeah, look. Um, there is one they all have to beat by the looks, but go ahead. Well, look, uh, you know, you're you're, you're quickly drawn to Ballam and, and Soil and Fly. Ballam was tore to the Soil and Fly over the course and distance the last day. Mm. Um, he's up three pound, four pound to find, or four lengths to find with Soil and Fly, who's up eight pounds. It's a second handicap run, it, you know, but I, I'm, I'm not sure. I, I, I just can't help but be drawn to Demi McLaughlin's other horse, another red cat. Um, she's never Great been night. off. She's racing good maidens. Um, like the race was had been and gone, but she stayed on the last day on her handicap debut. She's up and trip here. This is the one that I think is is ticking all the boxes. Like, well, I'd say it'd be money for both Silent and Fly and Ballum, and you know, I think they could be bumping into a, a really unexposed one here in in another red cat. Um, mm. Miel Flower probably deserves a mention of five year old. Um, never been off in maidens, but was handy enough on handicap debut, but just didn't jump well enough. Um, could take a step forward up and trip, but I don't think the jump up was good enough. I another red cat was probably beaten 50 lengths or more the last day, but still an eye catcher if you were <laughs> if you were bothered to look that far back after they'd crossed the line. Yeah. He made a bad mistake as well. I think it was either the third last or maybe the second last. I'm not sure, but that would have ended any any horse's chance um, on that ground. And it was New Year's Day, you said, Deck, wasn't it? So, um, yeah. No, was look, that another red? Was that? It was um, another red cat. Yeah, was that not New Year's Day or New Year's Eve? It was earlier this month. I, or it was might be in the 29th of. Was it the 29th of? Oh, do I have it wrong? Uh, I think it was New Year's Eve. It was behind Billy Lee Swagger now. Oh, it was the Billy Lee Swagger. Mm. Yeah, no, I, I'm confusing myself with the Ballam and Soil and Flight race, but yeah. Okay, no, okay. Like, although, like, there's Soil and Flight and Palom look really, really obvious here, and I, I suppose I, you wouldn't be surprised if they were first and second. Like, it, it, the form's there, and you wouldn't be surprised if Ballam, you know, reversed the form of Soil and Flight, but I'd be confident enough on another red cat here if, mm. if she's off. Um, if she's, if she's off. off, and it's and you know, it is tomorrow, could be nap material. <laughs> okay, that's that's it, that's bold. That is bold. But what I, I love it. have we got? We have 40 to 1 at, at the moment, so <laughs> like it's yeah, like it's a, it's a big, big old price. Um, but we'll see how Michael Malloy, uh, we'll know, we'll know quickly enough if the mayor is. is is a jigger tomorrow or not? Yeah, uh, but looks, look, I, yes, we're, we're, we're due one. Like it's it's yeah, you know it's been about three weeks or something. Isn't it? It, yeah. it's been something <laughs> since it's been about three weeks since we had something juicy. Like we 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 um for you kill Barry Saint last week. We had a good nice, but um like <laughs> these things just haven't stopped happening. Yeah, and that's when everyone it. will be drawn to soil and flight and Ballam. This horse is ticking all the boxes. Like mm. the, the the maiden. The, the runs in the maidens were good maidens, and they were and definitely an eye catcher. If you look that far back, the last day, yeah, no, it's a bold call. Um, I'm I'm not much fun here. I'm going to stick with Silent Flight. I thought uh, he was pretty dominant over the two and a half miles when finally stepped up to it last time out. Um, I don't think Ballum will reverse that form. Um, handicapper also, I think put him up three pounds for that, which uh, was a little bit harsh. I think Silent Flight got eight. Yeah. Um, I, I look I just think that's not going to stop him especially it, it's similar enough to um what was that Gavin Cromwell horse be, a tip that Clamell uh, the chaser um, money hoist money hoist yeah exactly yeah. like he's I, he's in the same he's in the same grade here so I just have yeah. to I would have thought like he's going to be very hard to beat the one that thing form. about soil face he was off for a long time before his run at mm. Nice as well mm. So he, he needed that. He 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 ran on really really well that day. He was a definite eye catcher, and then he, he went to one well the last day. So mm -hmm. there could be the, yeah right. There could be any amount from Prillman, but if another red cat is off, well, yeah, exactly, it could be <laughs> someone else's turn. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um. Right, deck. We'll move on then to the bumper, the five oh five. Uh, another bet, Victor. Proud to support Irish racing. They have to do Irish accounts. They're support like they're proud to support Irish racing. Like, um. Anyway, uh, evens for. 
Serman or, or Serm and Zarak. Um, so uh, Zarak out of a Galileo mare, probably not bought for this purpose, but it is a four year old bumper. You can kind of get them. Um, and then Real Empire for Shark Hanlon, also in there, who has a bit of experience. Harry's Dream for Philip Rothwell with a bit of experience, uh, as does Cole Cannon for Noel Mead, uh, 15 to 8 second favorite. That one, uh, Delta Force and Ben Purple are your debutants. Uh, John Ryan will probably have Ben Purple around about eight or nine times by the time the Punches Town Festival comes around, but we will see about that. Um, who do you like in the bumper deck, or are we just moving on to Thurlis? No, uh, look, um, this is the second. Um, Rob Carr flat red we've seen in, in the last few weeks or in the last Joseph month, had one yeah weeks, Joseph mm. had one um, and Hardy's dream was was toward lengths of that horse at, on Tiesti's day at Gower and uh, beating eight lengths it would be probably be Hardy's dream for me I know Cal Cannon was beating two lengths in the first fire all bumper of the year at Nice uh, but that was a messy messy race I thought or spread all over the track Um yeah, I, I, I'd have a go at Harry's dream here. Mm, very good, Harry's dream. Okay, I, I won't be having any bet in the, uh, in the, in the concluding bumper. Um, do you, do you remember actually? You probably don't now. I'm putting you on the spot with Cole Cannon. Do you remember her, his dam? She's a star. Same colours for no yes, need. Yeah, yeah, mm, yeah. Uh, good to see her with a with a foal. She's um, a no need as well. Yeah, she was. Yeah, same colours. Uh, dual purpose, great mare. Um. Yeah, look, I I wouldn't have any opinion here. Um, it would be it would be good to see, as you said, Harry's dream. But um, look, we we will see. Uh, moving on, then, deck will fly on to Thurlis, um to keep the show on the road with the www.thurlis.ie handicap chase. It's over two miles. Could well have a furious pace on. Um, we do have Willie Wampus and Dancing Jeremy in the same race, so this could be. You know, you, you might need to have a stayer here to win this over two miles. Uh, who do you fancy here? Yeah, well, look, Willie Wampus will definitely do his best to set a, a really, really strong gallop. Um, obviously, like, what did you make of Captain's nephew the last day? He was caught by Irish players at, at Down Royal. Yeah, he's just an on like, is he like that was back to two miles? Like, I'm not sure if he's a strong, it would be unfair to say he's not a strong finisher. Um, but maybe he's had like he's been busy hasn't he um, he has yeah you know he's been very busy he's, he's ran every month since September uh, now in fairness to him he's held his form very well hmm. and he's running some good races but uh, and the, the yard albeit uh, who like Philip Rotwell's having an absolutely phenomenal season it's, it's gone the yard's quiet. gone a little bit quiet now um, I wouldn't be fancying him here um, for, for those reasons uh, but yeah that would that would be my take on him yeah, and, and I'm similar. I, I do think there's plenty of improvement in them, but it might be after a little break. And mm. uh, I just don't know what happened the last day. But I like uh, a Grancy at the toy, and it's one we've talked about since the early taps. Yeah. Uh, when we, were, mm. we were watching them in, in beginner chases. Um, a seven-year-old, he was six lengths toward to the big chap at Fairy House very early on in the season, back in October. And then he was only beating 12 lengths by Spillance Tower. And he was an easy winner of a hurdles off a mark of 107. Then he was toured off 122. He was in here off 127. I think he's going to be a big improver over fences and a big improver on tours. Okay, yeah. Um, My only worry about Barry Connell's yard, it was until the weekend when Claude Duval ran a nice race under Finney Maguire. I was again a little bit worried that the horses might have had a, had some issues. Like obviously, um, a lot was expected of Marine National, yeah. and then there was um, horse that I just it's escaping the Amy in the three mile handicap hurdle at the Dublin Racing Festival. Well fancy, just ran no race. Snake oil? Um, no snake oil. No, it wasn't snake oil. It was it was in the handicap hurdle. It was behind Gay Aquila at Christmas, and then just it was fancy to actually reverse the form of Gay Aquila in the Dublin Racing Festival. He just ran no race. Um, but it was, I, I can't remember the name, but just off the top of my head. But it is good to, to see that um, that he, he did have a, a, a horse run well on the weekend. Um, what do you think about, the, um, what do you, what do you say, Hogwarts had the tie? Hogwarts had the tie. Grant, 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 <laughs> Grant, Grant the had the tie and but, uh, butchered this. Um, what did you think of his jumping last time out behind Spillane's Tower uh, and Firm Footings? Like it was, obviously it was a high class race for the grade, I would have thought anyway. Um, and there might be as 
good horses in here, but he was a little bit scrappy at a few of them. Would that worry you now stepped into a handicap or do you no, think No, look, that was a good race and you'd expect mm. it to sharp enough for, for running in a a, a race like that against really good horses. Uh, you know, I, I didn't think it was too bad at Fairy House at all. Mm. Um, look, that's the experience he might have needed to come and, and win a handicap first time up. Yeah. No, that, that's fair enough. Um, I, I wouldn't wouldn't begrudge that. Uh, look, I, I quite liked Willy Wampus, but I think he might not, I might, he might need ground uh, a little bit better. I, I love the way he goes about his business, um, like really aggressive and from the front. <laughs> Um, and the yeah, only I'm thing not... that would worry me, Andy, it's a, mm-hmm. it's a long, long run in at Tortoise, and there's only one fence in the straight. There and is front yeah. runners when it's soft. You know, if you've one that goes off, like he, was it Tremor he won early on the season? Or it was Trem- Tremor he won by half the track, yeah, and then he yeah. actually won a Tortoise last time out though, and he, he fought bravely on the run in, like he was really, really gutsy. Um, but I can't see he's open class normally, now, so you'd normally bounce home at Tortoise. Mm. I think it's it's going to be soft. Yeah, like it was soft the last day at Tortoise as well. Only it was the last week we were we were at Tortoise. It was you don't often see Tortoise and um, that soft. So mm. you know, if it was fast, I can see him getting home. But it's a long, long straight. Like there, there's there's yeah. not two fences in the straight anymore. There's only one. So it takes a lot mm. of getting to Tortoise. And um, when you're a front runner like that you can be real in you can get a little bit lonely when you're you know mm. it's, di- it's different coming off a bend or when you're nearly constantly turning like a tremor yeah no that's that's fair enough and obviously we have a top legend dancing jeremy uh in here off 10 stone tree like he's gonna he's gonna end up with a gold jacket with this podcast he's going he'd be one of the first hall of fame <laughs> entrants i'd imagine and um, and I, I couldn't nearly not back him like he's he actually keeps bumping into the horses but to be honest, I, I rated that race that he ran in last time out behind Bushman's Pass. Like I, I thought that was a really good race at the time. It's not really well, like Bushman's Pass was kind of poor at Gower. And I think Ivis Vladimir did win though on his next start. Um, yeah, he won at Fairy House. Fairy House. Yeah, so mixed signals, I suppose, about the form. Like I could easily talk myself into backing him again. Like it wouldn't you wouldn't take it wouldn't take a lot of convincing. I, I'm a big fan of the horse, but. You have to bet with your head here, not your heart. Um, we'll <laughs> it's actually a good idea to have a, a tab hall of fame and t- you know, maybe yeah, listeners exactly. can, can send us in a few. And yeah, you know, exactly. because it, we're, we're 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 not talking about the same horses. We're not talking about Marine Nationality Faso de Vega all year. Yeah, we've barely got a mention on here. So, um, be interesting to hear who <laughs> uh, what what the listeners feel. Dancing, dancing Jeremy might actually get the he could be an inductee or one of the he definitely be a. He'd definitely be in the running anyway. Uh, quite a legend. Uh, Battle of Ridgeway, um, six-year-old who, to be honest, has done very little wrong. Um, beaten half a length by Willy Wampus at Thurless. Um, maybe you could argue that that he was outstayed. Um, he could be getting faster as he gets older. Like that isn't like it's it's not common really, but it, it has happened in the past. Um, and then he found. I think it was Sean Flanagan on midnight. It is. Um, oh, on Ch- that was the same weekend as Cheltenham Trials Week. I think we put him up actually midnight. It is. But I only found him too good with an excellent front run and ride from Sean Flanagan. Um, he's gone up two pounds for that, but I don't think that's too bad. He's probably the one I would, if I was betting with my with my head and not my heart deck, Battle of Ridgeway is probably the one I'd come down on. I would just need to see Hagrid at the ties jumping just improve a little bit again. I wouldn't be ready to back him on only his third chase start. I actually think this is a warm enough race um, and the pace that they could go could catch him out. Um, and then obviously the the race in fam with me, I'll have my little black flag uh, with, with white stars on it, uh, you know, cheering, dancing Jeremy home. But it would be, a, <laughs> it would be a um, battle of Ridgeway for me and, and you're going to stick with the Connell horse deck, yeah? I was taking my a grand seat at all, yeah. Lovely, lovely. Yeah, I'm just gonna let you pronounce. It. I'm gonna give up. No, I should. I'm only guessing. <laughs> <laughs> we'll wait for Jerry. See what he thinks. Oh, but I um, said it confidently enough. <laughs> you did. You very much did. Um, right. So onto the the Col Reavy mares novice chase. What about that? The Kerry Glass. Oh, what could have been? What could have been? She could have won a gold cup, but they yeah. they sent her to walk in the park. Pity. Um, look, she deserves better than that. He's been with everyone. Yeah, exactly. He's an awful, he's an awful bloke. He is. <laughs> anyway, yeah, sit there, pays child support half the time if you're if you're lucky. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, anyway, uh, Hermania Maker off her 11 stone five. What mood is she going to be in is the big question. If she's in the mood, I would nearly say this is a non-contest deck, really, isn't it? Yes. Um, well, look, she, she's very, very good on her day, mm. but she can be bad. Um, oh, she can be bad, yeah. She can be a, a right L one is what you'd say now. Yeah, but she's to give ten pound here, like you know, and a lot of that has won here. She was she was twelve lengths off Hermonia Maker when Hermonia Maker was really good, and that was off Neville. So she's mm. not out of it. But obviously, we have to give Adam Gennard a mention and a uh, friend and follower, viewer, listener. Um, we spent a good bit of time with Adam in Aintree actually, and at Leopardstown uh, for the Dublin Race Festival this year. He's uh, part of the syndicate that owns Marsh Wren. She does need it soft. We, we it, it's funny. Um, Adam mentioned that Marsh Wren would would go to Taurus, and it's like we had yeah. the big debate about the the race at Limerick. You know, she'd be better to go there. There's a a great two or a great three for mares in Limerick in March, the week after Cheltenham. Turns out it's not there anymore. I think it's in. <laughs> it's it's already been banned. It's over Christmas. Would mm. be ideal at christmas except he she would have been bumping into oh was the i think Allegor or the vassy has won it i don't know who won it this year this year or, Willie, or last year willie usually runs it the right one or was this oh last was it year the mayor that was second her money maker actually a taurus the one um pottery yeah, I think it might have been. I'll have yeah. a look for you now. Anyway, yeah, hot to hot to rare, was it? Hot to rare? Hot to rare. Hot to yeah. Rare. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was her. Yeah. Friend, she, she needs it soft. She's fairly prolific at home. A fair play to them coming over. Like there's there's pots there, you know. I would have thought it might have been a smaller feel than this, but uh, I I to be honest, it's it's I think Lyle is going to give her money maker a really good match. Even if Hermania Mega turns up in the farm, she did like she's she's waited to, to get, have a right go at her. But you know, I do I do hope Marsh Ram wins, and I wish them all the best. And you know, they're coming over, taking a chance. We, we're saying British trainers should come over more often. Here, here's a stable taking a chance. So uh, mm. I hope they take a few quid back with them. Yeah, with a bit of luck, they do. Uh, it would be fantastic. They're only coming over for seventeen thousand seven hundred euro. Well, which but it is a listed race so they're not the black type yeah um yeah but she was a, a she's yeah she's already a black type mare uh, she has been placed um on on one occasion there over fences so yeah look i think it is a nice bit of placing by stuart edmonds with a bit of luck that they, they do run well and yeah look they are getting the weight off her money maker and if she wakes up and she's not in the humor this is a wide open race um and yeah why not why why shouldn't it not be marsh Ren? absolutely um it's more enough on, that um that eighteen thousand or, or whatever it is to the winner. Mm, yeah, yeah. Well, it's a bit short, is it? You think? Yeah, yeah. It's a bit light. I think. Yeah, light enough. Yeah. You know, um, we, we we slag off the prize money in in Britain all the time, but that that, that seems a little. It is light. a bit short. A little bit yeah. light. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, down next to the Boyle Sports Qualified Riders Handicap Chase two fifty three on the card, two and three quarter miles here deck um and the 12 runners look these races are, are as tough as they get um i did like the look of maybe another okana if this was over hurdles but he jumped like a snooker table on his um on his chase debut which was at clomel i found this race very very tough did you did you see anything that you quite liked there uh there was three that kind of tickled me fancy um Ernie mm -hmm. from Norney, it, it was a close toward off. He, he was a close toward off 96 over hurdles. He's still a maiden though. Um, and he's had one chase start. He's in here off 95. The reason we're not confident is because he's still a maiden. He hasn't won. Right. Um, you know, sometimes they're just not good enough to win, unfortunately. Uh, Moonlight Getaway off 91. It's his chase de debut. He was second to Soil and Fly off 87 on his last start. Derek O'Connor takes the ride. He's only four pound higher over over fences for, for his chase debut. But I'm siding with um on McCarty's horse, Soldier of Honor. Uh, it was a, he was a close tour to St. Dennis as well when he won what was it four mm. or five days after 
winning. Um, yeah. The last day, he won under the penalty. Uh, he was staying on up to four long. So now he was pulled up, pulled up at Limerick before that, but that was over Christmas. You always forgive a horse that. So in the race, I'm not, I don't have a really big opinion on it. I, I'd go for Soldier of Honour. Soldier of Honour, fair enough. Now that's a that's a valid enough um, pick. I am drawn to Moonlight Getaway. Um, as you said, Chase debut uh, didn't actually ever run in points either. Um, but as you said, that second to Silent Flight could work out to be a very, very nice piece of form, especially if Silent Flight and Bottom, uh, they, they could very easily fill the first two places in the in the race that they're running against each other in the handicap hurdle. Um, I thought that, yeah, that was a punch of sound, wasn't it? So, look, I think that 91 is obviously very workable. They've gone to the trouble of getting Derek O'Connor. Uh, I wouldn't imagine he's going to be missed in the market, but I can see where you're coming from with Soldier of Honour as well. Uh, strong enough form as well behind St. Dennis as well. Um, but again, these qualified rider races, they can be very tough. Um, you need probably a little bit more than than luck. You, they can go wrong. All it takes is them to go a slightly irresponsible gallop. We've seen it time and time again. Uh, but look, it's um, it's not a race that we need to to work too hard on, I suppose. There's plenty of other races that we've covered tonight. Um, Deck, we'll move on to the main event, which is the Michael Purcell Memorial Novices Hurdle. Um, spoke about this very briefly at the top of the show. We've got six runners, um, which include... What Pat, uh, Cloudy Tuesday, Largy Hill, Matten's Way, Staffordshire Not, and Stoke the Fire, um, really competitive, and this is a this is a proper good race, a, a nice midweek proper graded hurdle, which is fantastic, and it, yeah, uh, Perlis have got themselves a very nice feel here. And uh, what way do you see this going? Oh, we, I say you know what way I'm going. Um, yeah, go on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Staffordshire Not is. You know, his only defeat was was on debut, and that was behind uh, Reed and Tommy Wrong and Liz Nagar Fortune. And obviously, Reed and Tommy Wrong has won the Lawlers, and Liz Nagar Fortune was very, very good the last day when he won. Um, mm. He was impressive in his bumper and his maiden since then, six year old. Can I, can I interrupt you there, Deck? Yeah. Liz Nagar Fortune, 14s for the county, 7 to 1 for the Martin Pipe. He got two entries today for right. Cheltenham. Just he's in, in case you did ask me. Yeah. No, no, just the two handicaps there. He's only no. in the handicaps. Oh, as of right is now. He, so it looks like he's going to go he qualified. Uh, oh, yeah. He ran, I'm pretty sure he ran through the summer months. Um, I'm, I'm, I'll double check for you now, but I'm almost certain he ran through the summer months. Um, let me have a quick look for you. Uh, I think he's more of a Martin Pipe horse now than. Probably. A he says he's in the county. He's in the county and the Martin Pipe. So he won a bumper in April of 22, uh, was second on New Year's Day in 2023, uh, then was third in a maiden hurdle in May at Cork. So there was his two runs. His third run then was a short head defeat to Reed and Tommy Wrong in November. And then he won his maiden hurdle 14th of January. So there was four runs. So, so we have the straight try cast in the Martin Pipe now. <laughs> By the look. Waterford Whispers answer the cave and, and Liz Nagar Fortune. It's easy. I'll have yeah. to check if Answer the Cave got an entry, actually. But yeah, I'll get back to that. Oh, I was surprised if he didn't now. They were talking about it last week. But yeah, look, mm. the, the form is rock solid. I thought Liz Nagar Fortune was very, very good the last day. Um, yeah. I, I was impressed with him. And Stafford should not has been has been impressive since that, that debut, that bumper run behind the two of them. Um, the danger, I think, would be Stoke the Fire. He was an easy winner at Tremor on his, his Hurdles debut, five year old. Only rated 77 on the flat. You know, I like them and they're rated mid 70s, that mid area, yeah. on the flat, and they can jump there. You know, they, they usually do turn out to be better than the horses who are rated around 100. So I think he could uh, he could follow him home, but I'd be very keen on Staff Staffordshire not here. Yeah. Uh, look, his form is completely, um, it's pretty much completely untested. Uh, it's really hard to find anything to go on. Like the horses that he's beaten in maiden hurdles haven't really shown up. Uh, nor have the horses that he's ran in when he won his bumper. Um, so it is It is very, very difficult to kind of know the form. I suppose Ned in the Park was the only one. I, I think he was fourth in Staffordshire Knott's bumper. Um, he provo he finished in a similar spot on his next start to Thurless. But uh, look, the way he went through that maiden hurdle, it was very similar to the way Mighty Potter kind of won his maiden hurdle at Down Royal, um, albeit at a different time of the year. The horse just oozed class um and as you said only two and a quarter lengths to find with reed and tommy wrong 
and that was his first ever race course appearance i i could see this horse winning this and like announcing himself on the scene as a as a potential for the barring bingham Got um, gold, if, gold he's a goal he, he is he, like look who's bought him uh 510,000 he would have been if I was allowed to bring one horse home from that sale like, like obviously Codwell Potter was there and imagine and Fildor and um yeah for, uh, for me to be honest Andy Codwell Potter it was like it was I thought it was very very lazy he's a, he's a great one winner yeah he's going to be the most expensive this was the one that I'd have been mm. after yeah, and I'm starting to notice a, a trend with Gordon Elliott. He's seemingly running horses in maiden hurdles, and if they run well, bringing them back to win a bumper. And then he's sending them on their, their kind of path then. Like, we've seen it with Firefox. Obviously, listen to the show. Yeah, we've seen it with Firefox. We've seen it with um, My Trump Card. He's done it with this guy. Um, it is worth just having a look at it. I think Farring Glory. Did Farring Glory go back into bumpers after he ran over hurdles? I'm not sure. Um, no, I don't, I don't think he did. Yeah, but anyway, I think this is a right one. Um, I'm I'm really interested to see how he gets on. He's around twenty to one, I think, for the Barring Bingham. Again, I'm not a massive anti-post guy. Um, like if he was odds against in this race, I'd be happy just to back him here. Um, look, the forgotten horse in the race deck probably as well is Matten's Way. Um, he won mm -hmm. a maiden hurdle that has produced a lot of nice horses plenty of winners coming in from behind and I, i've half this maiden hurdle in the top tracker um it was a race that Adebay charlie was actually seventh in uh park yeah, joined we, us we, ran we put well. the horse that was second up as well the yeah, prince palace. palace yeah yeah prince palace um obviously you like park the joint who was fifth that day he's ran well yeah. in some maiden hurdles all for rachel i think has won a handicap hurdle or has gone very close it might have been second i think actually at navin um and then there's one horse in there the eighth place horse doran's law um who i i quite like he was uh he ran a nice race behind walkway harry in a bumper and ran in uh three maiden hurdles uh, he has a hurdles mark of 105 and i'd say they're waiting for decent spring ground for him um so if if anybody is listening and wants a horse for the springtime uh get doran's law on your tracker off 105 he could be dangerous um, but I'd be very interested to see how he gets on actually like he's been off a long time Matten's way since um, getting well beaten by Search for Glory in a three mile novice hurdle at Cork that basically turned into a sprint up the straight though so I wouldn't ever hold that against him and a truly run race uh, you could see a much better horse but as I said for me I, I'm really really I'm, I'm very high on Staffordshire not as are you um, I wouldn't imagine do you think he's going to be a backable price Thursday I, I don't think he will I think he surely would be favourite will he uh, it's a hard enough little race, like, uh, um, yeah, yeah. No, no, just have a you're uh, checking the tissues, yeah. I'll have a quick look at the tissues, but it's it's like Larry Hills in here as well. They, they've yeah. like, we didn't even mention it on the <laughs> tissues, like, right? Okay. Um, yeah, so but yeah, I like, suppose, Staff, yeah. Staffish or not was the one for me from the sale, like, yeah, I'm not mad on Caldwell potter at all like I, I thought he won not a weak grade one i thought he won a grade one that was probably destroyed by the weather yeah completely the race ground. Yeah. so um yeah he, he was he Caldwell Potter was never one that was on my radar i think he was probably bad value which, you know he don't already won his grade one. <laughs> yeah yeah you, you want to buy the one that's going to win the grade one he's already won his grade one you know hmm. I think Staffordshire or not would be be the, the best from that side. He's the future Cup cool horse, in my opinion. Yeah, I know. I'm very much looking forward to seeing him on Thursday. I think I completely agree with you as well. Um, proper, proper horse, I think he is. Um, moving on, we three more races to cover deck. Uh, the INH Stallion Owners EBF Maiden Hurdle over the nearly three miles. Um, look, to say this is a bad race is probably doing bad races an understatement. I'm probably going to give, uh, I'm going to go straight up. If the absence doesn't um, hinder him, I'd say Rushmount is surely the one to be given his next second to Lecky Watson and beaten yeah. a, a previous winner in Shannon Royale. Like, that's the best form on offer by a, a distance, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. I think mm. so. Yeah, that, that yeah. that's where I landed as well. Yeah. Um, like find a fortune. It was second to the impressive looking. Uh, was it Belarusy Dicky? Belarusy Dicky. That was Limerick, was it? 
the last day. Uh, it wasn't there. Was oh, sorry, it's Punchestown. It was Punchestown. Punchestown. Sorry, sorry, yeah. sorry. Yeah, yeah. Um, it was fourth to da- Dancing City before that, um, but five lengths behind Nost and Array. Nost and Array was second to Cletus Pula after that. Mm. And I'm just not sure. And the farm's not looking all that hot, is it? That, no. that line of farm anymore. I know we were probably hyping it up a bit before um, the Dublin Racing Festival, but it's just kind of taking it down to one now. Yeah, the, yeah. The Johnny Sweeney, Horace Rushmill, the second to Lecky Ross, and I, I, I agree with you. Yeah, no, I, I think that's the better form. Look, I know people probably screaming, how can you tip Dancing City and not back find the fortune here? But my case was that Dancing City was going to steal that grade one, and I know he didn't make all the running on, Danny Munns didn't make all the running on him, but it was probably well, because the, the bridle snapped on, on or, or Rachel had steering problems with everyone yeah. on, on the mare. She was keen, so, like she was, yeah. 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 She lost her orange as well, and she, mm-hmm. Rachel. And Danny still had the run of the race, so um, yeah, no, it would be, I think that's the strong form. Assuming all's well with Rush Mount after the 112 day absence, I, I think he's the one to beat, really. Um, moving on then, Deck will, try and get this under an hour we're nearly there though uh the conley's red mills ladies handicap hurdle it's an 80 to 102 the 423 two miles um this is proper properly competitive uh 14 yeah. runners who do you like here uh well look first of all i i want to uh wish listener to the show i think she's a listener to the show okay um definitely follows the the page um but abby fitzgibbon has arrived here on navy wave so like the, the wish her oh, all the best. Mm. <laughs> Unfortunately, not carrying my money, but um, <laughs> look, I have a great spin around and, and good, good luck, Abby. But uh, I look, I'm drawn to Port Rashid, Jody riding for Tim. Um, look, 13 years of age, and I'm not putting up a 12 year old <laughs> now, putting up a 13 year old. But it was a fine fart the last day, and sometimes in these races, it can be it can be as easy as you know the daughter riding for the father um it is something i always look for in these sort of races and uh e- even in you know the odd flutter i'd have in britain you- you'd see races like this and I- mm-hmm. i'd often look for that um it, look the horse has, has, has shown a bit of consistent form as well uh bloom hill uh, a point to point winner um I don't know the jockey Miss S fairly. Um mm. point to point winner. Uh, maybe didn't stay on handicap debut and uh, the mark of mark might have been a little bit harsh, the opening mark. One oh four, yeah. Yeah, one oh four. Um drop it's for the down. third it it's it's for the third of Tremor, maybe, or like twenty two lengths mm. to hold my lord as well. Like it's the two but runs that are not that bad, like I know, just Look, maybe I have a run, but I thought one of four was better. Drop two pounds to one or two, but look, mm. c- c- it is one that could get competitive. And then obviously, star official deserves a mention. Um, Miss Georgie Benson takes the ride. Look, he's just gonna run his race again, isn't he? Like, he is, mm. I'd say he could be short enough, but he, he's a, probably a you know, a banker for the for the place for the places place, on yeah. the snap. <laughs> and I, I, I look it'd be part of shade for me. Um I know and Jody had I think Jody rode the last day as well. So it, look it's not mm. like the horse has been laid out for this race and Jody's just been put up for it, but um that's where I'd be beside him. But you obviously want to wish Abby all all the best. Absolutely, yeah, very best luck, Abby. Um I came down on Bloom Hill. I know you gave him a little bit of a mention earlier, Deck. Um it, it, I kind of applied the kind of Kilbarry Saint. Uh, rationale to it i know you said maybe didn't stay but like he did weaken quite quickly um and now they're coming back to two miles yeah. so the way i read this is that he's going to be bounced out uh they'll make use of him uh decent maiden hurdle form earlier on not so good since but i think the mark 102 is workable uh, it's an 80 to 102 he ran in i think a, a 10 the bracket last time out, i think it was 109 so he is down in class and he's down in trip um it was an 80 to 109 so now he's running in an 80 to 102 so the 12 stone like he's a point winner as you said deck shouldn't have any uh hindrances on him i know point to point winner coming back to two miles is not the the uh, most conventional thing you ever see but horses that win point to points don't always stay 
especially as they get older. I think we mentioned that earlier in the uh, in the podcast. But look, I think he's down in class, down in trip. Uh, make use of him. I'll, I'll take a flyer. It's no no problem for me. Um, and then, Deck, your your selection there again was uh, Port Rashid. Port Rashid. Right on to the uh, final race. Uh, they love the mares and Turles, don't they? Jenny Mac, the mares they, they, they love a mare and Turles. Uh, yeah, I thought there's the an obvious one in here, Andy. You, you're drawn straight to it, yeah. Uh, am I? Oh, How long do I have? Is 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 there is there? I actually barely. I'm not going to lie to you. I didn't have much of a look in the in the bumper. Let me oh, see. Well, if I can I'll tell you out. this. Will be quick. There's a horse right, in here that has been second to fun 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 over hurdles, right? Before being fifth, to now flies on him at Leopardstown. Sans risk. Sans risk. Sans risk. Yeah, I would have. I think they actually have that in the tracker. Funny enough. And mm. um, yeah, no, I think that was 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 that one entered for a bumper and then they didn't take up the entry. I could have. Yeah, maybe not. I don't know. But anyway, yeah. Look, that's case closed. I'll actually, funny enough, having no intentions of backing something, uh, I might have to back that. <laughs> there that, you go. A, yeah. It's an open and shut case in the bumper. Sans risk. Um, it could even be the nap at the top. Who knows? Uh, do we have a nap at the top deck? Oh, I, I assume it has to be Staffordshire, not. Yeah, um, it does actually, doesn't it? It has to be Staffordshire, yeah. not especially as, as, long, as long as it's odds against. I would give a little shout out if for maybe double purposes. If we go back to Punchestown, the three fifteen and Therese getting the eight pounds off uh, Q today as in that in that maiden hurdle. We um, get it in that, but six to four. No, well, look, I think Staffordshire not will be a similar price. I, I'm, I, and we we're both kind of strong in that, so. Yeah, you'll we'll go with Stafford, SP, but you, you, can, yeah. you can take the price on Therese, yeah, and get it posted. You, you can get the SP on Stafford or not, and in yeah. the meantime, you can just back another red cat exactly, exactly 40 to one. What a, what a world! Um, and well, then look, you can that's, also that's supposed to be in a, a nap for me, like I'm yeah, I, I'm confident enough on that one now. And if anybody listens to or I uh, obviously whoever listens to the podcast, if anybody goes on to Twitter or x i'm just gonna actually just check just before we leave i'm gonna leave this easter egg and we, we i'll try and do something for for whoever manages to do this uh i'm just gonna make sure answer to cave is actually entered in the martin pipe uh da, 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 da. yes he is he's a 14 to 1 job if anybody tags us and then tags a load of betting firms and asks for the tricast and the martin vibe of an anti-post answer, tricast an anti-post tricast of answer to cave Waterford Whispers and um, the Willie Mullins horse deck. Uh, Liz Nagar, Liz Nagar Fortune. Liz Nagar Fortune. So, so tag the podcast, tag as many bookies as you can, and ask them to price up that. And if they give you a price, I don't know, I'll, I'll try and buy a point or, or I'll do something. But <laughs> yeah, tag the podcast. That it'd be very funny if someone actually tries to do it. I, I, you'd I want ridiculous odds now on that. No, don't, yeah, you'd want a million to one. Wouldn't you? <laughs> one. You'd want. One you'd be three. rubbing your hands if they're even. Yeah, you'd be rubbing your hands if they're even declared, bro. People. Yeah. <laughs> you'd be halfway. You wouldn't even be nearly halfway there. You'd be fucking. 0.1 percent of either uh anyway um that was a lot of fun if anybody does do that that would it would make my day uh but that was top 32 punches town and turles very very enjoyable uh we will be back soon for top 33 and we do have a little bonus podcast coming out uh which i will just mention uh we're currently doing up an excel for the cheltenham festival every handicap race we're taking irish horses right now we're taking their rating we're going to compare their Irish rating to their English rating and we're going to do a difference and we're going to go through every single handicap next week uh, talking about what horses got what and which ones make the most appeal to us and um, so do stay tuned for that and um, very much looking forward to that project and we're still trying to work out the logistics of it in the background but we will make it work and um, that will be either top 33 or 34 I'd imagine Dick and um, but yeah no until then uh, that was top 32 and we will see you soon bye-bye cheers good luck bye-bye